Um, I'm shooting at somebody, and he's got a sniper. Uh, he's around the back of the antenna. He's here on my right. He's here. On he's my also right. got a tank. I got him. There's a tank down there as well. Tank's pushing in. Oh, there's a tank uh, over here. That's what I was saying. There's a tank coming. I, I was. I was just. No panic. No, no panic. I'm not panicking. What? Why the hell do you think I keep panicking? I'm not panicking. Ain't no panic in my voice. Uh, uh, come on down there, mate. What are you doing? Oh, you're already down here. I'm already on the cloud. Hey. Making on you. Panicking. I'm not panicking. Panicking. What? Oh. What? Panic. Panic. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope y'all doing well. I'm doing pretty good. I never get tired of exploring what other players like and dislike about Battlefield, whether that's the current game or older games. But now we're in a time of limbo and no new Battlefield content for at least another year. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at what players don't want in the next Battlefield game. Looking back at all the previous games, there has been some features that didn't continue on into the next versions, sometimes for good and other times it was a change unwanted by the player base. This all started when I was playing Battlefield 4 and I forgot about the active spotting system. That got me thinking, I really hope Dice doesn't bring that back into the next game. If you didn't know, Battlefield 5 doesn't have the same spotting system that it had in previous games, and I would like to see some of that narrowed down even further into the next game. But before we get into all of that, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who responded to my request for this. I, I put this out there a couple of months ago, and the conversations have been ongoing ever since, especially in my Discord. That's right, if you didn't know, I have a Discord, and if you want to join, the link is in the description down below. Please join. That's really the best way. If you ever want to get a hold of me, you've got questions, you just want to chit chat, please come on by. Link in the description down below. Also, a special thank you to the guys from the Old Man Army Platoon. Big help from those guys. A lot of this stuff came from them. Thank you guys very much. I really do appreciate it. So, here are five things players don't want in the next Battlefield game. Number five spotting. Active and passive spotting have been in the game since before I started, which was Battlefield Bad Company 2. Active spotting works like this. When you see an enemy player, click your spotting button to place a big red dot or Dorito over their head for your entire team to see. Passive spotting is when an enemy gets within a certain distance of your field of view, which will cause a red dot to appear. That all changed when Battlefield 5 rolled out. The only way to spot in this game was by placing a ping locator for your squad to see, and if that was directly on the enemy, it would turn red. However, the mark would not move with the enemy and it would only stay in place for a short time. Of course, flares are still in the game and will spot players on your minimap, but it doesn't place a mark over their heads. Personally, I think DICE did a fantastic job of removing the old spotting system. It allowed us to be creative and execute some incredible flanking opportunities. But unfortunately, all of that changed last Christmas when DICE executed their own flank and made a few changes that players were not happy with. One of the things they did is they brought back passive spotting. Of course, it wasn't as strong as previous games, but it wasn't something the players wanted. However, the visuals in Battlefield 5 at one point were so bad that a prone player could lay in the middle of the street and take out an entire enemy team. I think those visual issues are what prompted them to make such changes in the first place and probably some other reasons, but there's still a few players out there that wish they would have just left it alone. I do hope the next Battlefield game will be careful of these visual issues and they won't need to bring back such an old spotting system. But if they're going back to say Battlefield 3 or something like that, is that something that you want? Do you like that active spotting? Do you like being able to just put a red dot over an enemy team's head and let it move around with them? Or do you like the idea of the ping system in Battlefield 5? Let me know. Number four, behemoths. Behemoths in Battlefield are not a new thing and they have been a part of Battlefield in one way or another. However, Battlefield 1 was the first to call them behemoths. In Battlefield 1942, they had large battleships that were available on certain maps, but were mainly used as deployment. Battlefield 2142 had Titans. Titans were a massive, heavily armed, armored and shielded vehicle, which carried a complement of air vehicles. It also functioned as both a deployment point and a defensive objective. The AC Goliath also appeared in Battlefield 2142 in the Northern 
Strike expansion. Exclusive to its Assault Lines game mode, it featured a regenerative armor and orbital strikes while providing a mobile spawn point. The AC-130 gunship appears in Battlefield 3 Armored Kill DLC, providing three gun positions and additional mobile spawn points. Battlefield 4 brought back the AC-130 gunship, but this time it was used as a call-in strike assist on certain maps, functioning solely as a weapons platform. So what was the difference between all of those behemoths and what we got in Battlefield 1? Well, it was the first time these large vehicles were used as a comeback mechanic and would spawn in when a team was losing by 100 tickets. These behemoths were both heavily armed and armored, which made it very difficult to destroy. Each type of behemoth offered many gunner positions, some with an open area used as mobile spawn points. If a behemoth was destroyed, its remains were scattered on the battlefield, providing extra cover or hindering movement. We didn't see any type of behemoth in Battlefield 5 this time around, but I'm sure we haven't seen the last of them. However, I don't expect to see them in the same capacity as we did in Battlefield 1. I was never really a fan of the behemoths in Battlefield 1 either. I do think they worked in one game mode, and that was Grand Operations. Using them in Conquest, to me, just it didn't work, but that's just my opinion. Number 3. Limited Time Game Modes Battlefield to me has always been about their large maps with vehicle and infantry gameplay. For the longest time in the franchise, the two main game modes for this have been Rush and Conquest. But over the years, that's changed and now we have new game modes that get introduced into the game like Rand Operations, Frontlines, Outpost, Breakthrough, and Squad Conquest. Now, at the start of Battlefield 5, the large 64-player game modes consisted of Conquest, Breakthrough, and Operations. The smaller 32-player game modes were Team Deathmatch, Domination, and the Diamond in the Rough from Battlefield 1, Frontlines. However, Rush was nowhere to be found, so a game mode that had been a staple of the franchise for almost a decade was no longer in the game. So at launch, Battlefield 5 had six game modes to choose from, and for the most part, players were happy with that. The only big question was, when would DICE bring back Rush. Well, that question got answered seven months into the game's life cycle, but not in the way we expected. Out of the blue, DICE decided to pull two 32-player game modes that they said were not performing as well as they would like, and were supposedly splitting the player base. That was Domination and our beloved Frontlines. In their place, they gave us Squad Conquest, a 16-player small map version of Conquest. Look, don't get me wrong, I enjoy Squad Conquest. I've been in some very close matches that went down to the very end. So yeah, it can be a lot of fun, but I would still take front lines any day of the week over Squad Conquest. After that change, DICE decided to bring back Frontlines, but only in a continuing saga of weekly game mode rotation. That's right, DICE thought it would be a good idea to break out limited time game modes and throw those into the mix. Each week we'd get a new game mode that would make us all moist and longing for more. That would include Frontlines, Fortress, Grind, Rush, and Outpost. Now, at the end of the game's life cycle, DICE added most of the mentioned game modes into their own playlist, and that's Rush, Frontlines, and Domination. The only ones that are not present at this time are Fortress and Grind. Look, I know not every game mode will work in every version of Battlefield. I mean, you're not going to find a game mode like Pigeons other than Battlefield 1. And the same could be said for Outpost in Battlefield 5. Some game modes just, they just don't travel. But keep the game modes that you know your player base enjoys, like Conquest, Rush, Breakthrough, Team Deathmatch, Squad Conquest, and Frontlines. With each new version of Battlefield, we're going to have the opportunity to explore new game modes. But you can't just start hacking away at the problem with a hatchet and taking away game modes that are loved by a large portion of your player base. Especially when there wasn't a problem to begin with from your player's perspective. After what the players of Battlefield 5 have endured, I hope DICE have learned that they need to keep their promise and have an open and honest communication with the community. Number two, attrition. Battlefield 5 at the start introduced us to a limited ammo and health attrition system that made some players question if DICE had any idea of what they were doing. Me personally, I was never any good at the previous Battlefield game, so I never ran out of ammo. Attrition really never did bother me, but there are some players who hate it and say it makes the game less fun, like Danny on PC. Other players don't mind it so much. I like the idea of having a limited number of bandages and not always magically healing as you sit behind cover to heal. Others think when it comes to vehicles, that's where the attrition system could use some work. Now, granted, most of these players are infantry-only players, but, you know, we'll, we'll run with it. Here's some of the suggestions that I got. Remove tank resupply stations in the spawn area so tanks are forced to move out and attack. Also, remove the fly and repair and replenish field goals for planes to fly through. Actually have them land and resupply the plane themselves. Yeah, I don't see that happening. 
at all. <laughs> I don't see that one going over well at all. But just note that in previous Battlefield games, like I think Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3, you literally had to spawn in the area and run to the vehicle and get in it. You could not just spawn in the vehicle like you do now. I don't know. What do you think about attrition? Do you guys want it? Do you want to keep it? What do you What do you want to do? I, it's just, it's not something that is big on my plate. I, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. Again, the only thing that bothered me was the magical healing all the time, but you know, I could take it or leave it to be honest. Number one, overcomplicated weapon assignments and challenges. Battlefield has become notorious for making its players jump through hoops to simply unlock new weapons. Battlefield 1 was probably the worst at this. There was a particular assignment that had to be one of the toughest challenges I'd ever come across just to unlock a weapon. You were required to shoot down a plane using an LMG, all the while everyone else is doing the exact same thing. Last person to get a hit wins. In Battlefield 5, DICE toned down the difficulty level, but it was still a grind to get weapons unlocked. On top of that, now you had a limited time to complete the challenge or you'd have to wait to purchase the weapon with company coin. That's the in-game currency you earn for just playing the game. Not all weapons were available after the weekly challenges were completed. Some you couldn't purchase until the season was over. But once you had the weapon in hand, all you needed to worry about is getting it to level four so you could unlock the specializations. After your specializations were all unlocked, you could set the weapon up the way you wanted. And then you needed to worry about your assignments. That's right, each weapon came with their own assignments for proficiency and mastery. These assignments would net you a mint and gold skin for your weapon. These assignments were not always easy and sometimes very convoluted. Most of the time, you would need to get eliminations while on an objective that you owned or off an objective you didn't own as long as the enemy was on the objective all the while trying to get headshots or hip fire kills with the said gun you were working on and that was just the proficiency the mastery took that up a whole new level and would make you do the same thing but all in one life or all in one round none of this was really about skill but more often than not it was about luck yes there is skill involved but if your team is too good or not good enough you wouldn't get the opportunities needed to let skill take over. And please note, I'm not talking about the pro gamers that are out there streaming eight to 10 hours a day. Those guys will eventually get it because they, they have all the time in the world. I'm talking about your average player that only has a few hours in the evening, maybe one to two hours at best. These challenges and assignments were ridiculous and I hope they never make it back into the game again. So tell me what your thoughts about all of this. Is there anything that you don't want to see in the next Battlefield game? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what you want in the next Battlefield game. That'll be the next video. All right, well, that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and liking. God, this channel is just growing by leaps and bounds. Thank you, guys. You, you beautiful bastards. Ah, I love it. All right, well, that's it for me. As always, thank you again. And uh, until next time, bye for now.